I'm Seth Meyers. This is Late Night. We hope you're doing well. And now, if you don't mind, we're going to get to the news. President Biden voted today in Delaware. Okay, so that's one for Jill Stein. <laughs> Former President Trump held a rally yesterday at Madison Square Garden in front of a crowd of 20,000 people, and it was the most vitriolic, rage-filled group of white people in that building since the last Rangers game. <laughs> That's right, former President Trump held a six-hour-long rally yesterday at Madison Square Garden, coming in just three hours short of the record held by Fish. <laughs> Ahead of former President Trump's rally last night, bottles of urine were reportedly found in the area where supporters were waiting in line. That's how you know most of those people weren't New Yorkers. We don't use bottles. <laughs> Can you imagine? While speaking at his rally last night, former President Trump said that he knows his mother is in heaven while Melania was clearly in hell. <laughs> I mean, what with all the terrible things they were saying about immigrants. <laughs> During his speech yesterday, former President Trump said if he's reelected, he would let former candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. quote, go wild on medicines. Though, by the time a guy is picking up roadkill to take home and eat, he's probably pretty wild on medicines already. <laughs> In a new interview on Joe Rogan's podcast, former President Trump said that he wants to be a, quote, whale psychiatrist. Look at that. He's not even president yet, and he's already created one new job. <laughs> Beyonce appeared at a rally for Vice President Kamala Harris on Friday and said that she is, quote, not here as a celebrity. Me either, said everyone who spoke at Trump's rally. A uh, Timothy Chalamet lookalike contest was held over the weekend in Manhattan and every other day in Brooklyn. <laughs> and finally, authorities in Canada recently arrested four people who were allegedly involved in stealing rare Pokemon and Magic the Gathering trading cards, or if their cellmate asks, murder. <laughs> and that was a monologue, everybody. We are off and running. We got a great show for you tonight. She's an Emmy-nominated actress, comedian, and best-selling author. You know from her incredible work on SNL, plus The White Lotus and the other two. She stars in the fourth season of Only Murders in the Building. And the season finale is tomorrow. Molly Shannon will be here, everybody. The great Molly Shannon. He is a fantastic comedian and dear friend. You know from SNL, and I think you should leave his latest stand-up special, Brooks Whelan, Alive in Alaska is out now. It is fantastic. Brooks Whelan is back on the show, everybody. But before we get to all that, Republicans in the Trump campaign are distancing themselves from a racist comment at Trump's rally in Madison Square Garden on Sunday that sparked an immediate backlash. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. You may have heard Kamala Harris and Tim Walz say they're running a campaign of optimism and joy. Well, Donald Trump wants you to know that he is, too. He's running an optimistic and joyful campaign because we all know that Donald Trump has a famously sunny disposition. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. He's the human embodiment of that groggy feeling you get when you drink too much too fast at brunch and you go home and pass out on the couch and then you wake up a few hours later and it's dark outside, you don't know what time it is, and your roommate flicks on the lights and you say, No, get those lights off! <laughs> off! Nonetheless, Trump wants you to believe that he's the optimist in the race, although it doesn't really fit in with his usual stump speech. There's never been a man investigated like Donald J. Trump, not Al Capone, Alphonse Capone. If he had dinner with you and didn't like you, you were a dead person. I spent more time under investigation than Scarface, Al Capone. But it's amazing. So there are a lot of people that wanted to put her in jail. They didn't give a damn. I said, no, you can't do that. The wife of a president. And then I get in there, and they go after me, these animals, these dirty animals. I'm leading a movement of optimism and confidence and hope. That has to be one of the worst segues in the history of politics. <laughs> Normally, if you switch gears that hard, you leave your transmission in the middle of the road. And that was... Almost as bad as the time Bill Clinton said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Now, let me get a quarter pounder with fries. <laughs> you can't go from a story about Scarface murdering people to calling your opponents dirty animals to I'm leading a movement of optimism. <laughs> you know, unless you're leading some other movement we don't know about. I'm leading a movement of optimism. Not this one, of course. This one. 
This one right here is about violent revenge and retribution, but, you know. <laughs> I'm also leading a second movement parallel to this one, too. Erect a Hello Kitty in Central Park, a statue of Hello Kitty, so... <laughs> so that's two movements, the one to make little kids smile, and then, you know, this one, to make my enemies languish in prison, it's pretty... pretty cool I'm doing, too. <laughs> But to Trump, that's not even a tone change. When you have no moral compass or any real beliefs outside your own self-enrichment and you're incapable of feeling shame and embarrassment, it's easy to be all things at once. It's how Trump can both brag about ending Roe v. Wade while also claiming to be the father of IVF while also admitting he didn't know what IVF was. So he hears Harris talk about optimism and thinks, oh, I'll just add that to what I already have. Al Capone, they called him Scarface. He was a cold-blooded killer. He didn't like you. He'd stab you on the spot. Blood gushing all over the table. An ugly scene. They'd stuff your body in a trunk. <laughs> Drive you out to the woods and bury you. You wouldn't even have a proper funeral. Your family would never know your fate. <laughs> Chop you up into little pieces. It's true. It's true. Also true, we're leading a campaign of joy and optimism. <laughs> Everyone at tonight's rally will receive a friendship bracelet that says Scarface on it. But Trump's not the only member of his campaign or his family who has repeated this ridiculous lie. It was amazing. The energy last night was palpable in the room. The spirit, it was happiness and joy. It's not a political movement, Jesse. This is a movement of total love. This isn't politics. This is a, this is a movement of absolute love. You feel love, right? I mean, you feel true love. I'll have people that I've never met before, guys, you know, come up to me and literally give me a hug. You know, it's like I've known them their entire lives, and, and, and I, I feel like in, in a certain way we, we do. There is so much love in the air. I can tell you, more people have come up to me on the street in the last week and given me hugs saying, we miss him so much. I mean, literally, sometimes, Sean, with tears in their eyes, we miss the man so much. People are coming up to me, giving me hugs. I literally just came out of a plane, and every single person is coming up to me, hugging me. Look, I want to give Eric a little bit of wiggle room here because I've got to imagine when Donald Trump is your dad, your early years are a real Sahara desert in the hugs department. <laughs> Human touch is probably so foreign to him. I'm surprised every time someone hugs him, he doesn't in my pants. He'll be fine, right? He'll be fine that I use that, right? I mean, <laughs> and we do a podcast together. It'll be fine. So both campaigns are trying to claim the mantle of love and joy. On the one hand, you've got Kamala Harris campaigning with Beyonce, Bruce Springsteen, and Barack Obama before record crowds. And Tim Walls did a Twitch stream with AOC where they talked politics while they played Madden before Walls showed AOC an old Sega game called Crazy Taxi. You started playing this because an intern brought it to your office, is that right? No, I took it back there. I, I just <laughs> You there. brought it. <laughs> well, see, it was the first time I had a real job. I was like an adult and I had money. And I was, I was like married, and my wife was not really approving of. You know, she thought it was a little bit. Weird. In those days, she, not she didn't want crazy taxi in the house. No. So, so, oh, shoot. so you brought it to the office because they didn't want so crazy I brought it taxi to the in office the house. And my wife said, "You need to get rid of it and be like a real person or whatever." <laughs> Feels like you should be a little bit better at it. <laughs> I don't know if this is appealing to Gen Z, but it's definitely appealing to Gen X. Your wife made you get rid of your video games, so you just took them to the office? I mean, I can fully understand that. Of course, as a super busy television host, I myself would never have the time to... Ow! Oh, <laughs> also, it's so Gen X to talk about your wife like she's your mom. Yeah, she told me I had to be a real person or whatever. It's such bull I'm an adult. <laughs> Honey, can you bring down some pizza rolls? So that's a glimpse into the Democrats' version of joy and optimism. Let's see all the hopeful and optimistic guests who are lined up for Trump's big Madison Square Garden rally. A star-studded lineup is set to take the stage alongside Trump at the world's most famous arena. The campaign also wants to show off the, quote, historical political movement that he has built in these final few weeks, bringing together the likes of Elon Musk, Dana White of the UFC, and so many others you'll see here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage professional wrestler Hawk Hogan. Are you Oof, that was like watching my kids try to take off a sweater. There's a zipper. Just undo the zipper. 
You look like you're having a hockey fight with yourself. <laughs> but at least it was worth the wait, because when Hulk Hogan got it off, it revealed a shirt under that shirt. <laughs> it's so unsettling when wrestlers can't land their signature move. It would be like Dwayne Johnson yelling, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? I can't, because it's allergy season. I'm all stuffed up. <laughs> but yet somehow, that was not the most pathetic highlight of the evening, because Elon Musk was also there. I'm not just MAGA, I'm dark, gothic MAGA. Oh my God, it looks like someone's trying to get their own Magic the Gathering card. <laughs> you don't understand, he's not just MAGA, he's dark gothic MAGA. He's like a dark MAGA battle cleric who learned epic MAGA wizard skills at the College of Dark MAGA Spellcasting. Hold on, Mom? <laughs> Can you bring down some more pizza rolls? And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be difficult here, but is the difference between MAGA and dark gothic MAGA the hat being black? <laughs> is that why you're pointing at the hat? No one's ever cool pointing at a hat. Oh, uh, I think you'll find I am world's number one grandpa. <laughs> and look, I know even if that guy loses 99.9% .9 of his wealth, he'll still be richer than me, and I appreciate that he is trying to do that, but does he have to be so tragically lame? If I had as much money as this guy, I'd spend it doing awesome like buying a sports team or a super yacht or a new vintage Nintendo that I didn't have to blow on all the time. Yeah, kids! We used to blow on our video games. <laughs> you! Also, can we hear that Elon scream again? <laughs> Sounds like a sick Wookiee. <laughs> you gotta be careful. RFK Jr. was there, dude, and if he hears that scream, he's gonna think you're a dying bear cub and throw you in the back of his weird van. So these weirdos want you to think this was a rally of love and joy. Let's hear some of that love and joy in action. We will have the largest mass deportation in American history. There's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. In fact, she is the devil who ever screamed that out. She is the Antichrist. She is some sick bastard, that Hillary Clinton, huh? What a sick son of a bitch. The whole party, a bunch of degenerates, low lives, Jew haters, and low lives. The illegals, they get whatever they want, don't they? It's gonna be pretty hard to look at us and say, you know what? Kamala Harris, she's just, she got 85 million votes because she's just so impressive. As the first Samoan Malaysian low IQ former California prosecutor ever to be elected president, it was just a groundswell of popular support. And anyone who thinks otherwise is just a freak or a criminal. Well, there's a third option. You could be a freak and a criminal. I <laughs> think Tucker's just jealous of Kamala because he's whiter than a polar bear watching Frasier on a sailboat while eating a tub of mayo. <laughs> By the way, even if she doesn't get 85 million votes, you're still a freak. Even if Trump wins, it wouldn't magically erase the fact that you called Trump an angry dad who's gonna spank his enemies and tell them they've been a bad girl and that you once told the entire world you wanted to have sex with a piece of candy. Trump could win by 400 electoral votes next week, but the longest section on Tucker's Wikipedia will still be called allegations of candy <laughs> That's not real, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just feeling super dark and gothic today. Maybe Photoshop in a hat. <laughs> of course, it may not surprise you to learn that those obscene and racist comments have sparked an intense backlash, forcing Republicans and the Trump campaign to backpedal. Those words prompting swift rebuke from both sides of the aisle, including several Republicans. Senator Rick Scott of Florida, which is home to over one million Puerto Ricans, writing, it's not funny and it's not true. Congresswoman Marie Elvira Salazar insisting this rhetoric does not reflect GOP values. In a rare move from the Trump campaign, a statement in an effort to distance itself from the comments saying, quote, this joke does not reflect the views of President Trump or the campaign. Obviously, that joke does not reflect the views of President Trump or our campaign. You know how bad something has to be for the Trump campaign to distance themselves from it? Trump won't even distance himself from Hannibal Lecter. He's bragging about how similar he is to Scarface. I never thought I'd see the day when the Trump campaign is distancing themselves from something said at one of their own rallies. They're so desperate to disavow this comment, they're going on TV and apologizing, and this is true, with... Tears in their eyes. Although... <laughs> I have to say, I thought Tim Walls had the best response on his stream with AOC when they saw the clip and reacted to it live. Who is that jackwad? Amazing. <laughs> Perfect response to bust out while you're playing video games. 
What the hell? That dude just stole my loot box. What a jackwad. <laughs> this rally at Madison Square Garden was grotesque and ominous, both for its historical parallels and for the vision of America had presented, which can probably be summed up in this remark from Trump himself. We're running against something far bigger than Joe or Kamala and far more powerful than them, which is a massive, vicious, crooked, radical left machine that runs today's Democrat Party. It's just this amorphous group of people. But they're smart and they're vicious. And we have to defeat them. And when I say the enemy from within, the other side goes crazy, becomes a sound of, oh, how can he say? No, they've done very bad things to this country. They are indeed the enemy from within. I mean, if that isn't fascism, then what is? I mean, what do you have to do to get branded a fascist by the GOP? Get caught, I don't know, praising Hitler? Oh, right. All right. I... <laughs> hey, MAGA fans, putting aside the rhetoric and just on a pure entertainment level, this is what you waited hours to see, the world's most tired criminal, a sundowning Frankenstein sleepily burping out fascist threats about ending democracy and an aging wrestler trying to rip off his shirt like a dog trying to get out of his surgery cone. <laughs> You're in New York City, baby. You could have seen so many other things. You could take it a Broadway show, go to a museum, take a walk at Central Park, check out the new Hello Kitty statue. <laughs> this rally was a grotesque and odious scene, a brazen display of racism and fascism that was so alienating to normal, decent people. Even Republicans in the Trump campaign are now distancing themselves from it. The only people who were excited by any of this were the weirdos who were on stage laughing and ripping their shirts off and screaming like they were about to blow their... Jackwad. This has been a closer look.